Today we're going to learn how to create this warm, saturated film look in DaVinci Resolve. Let's dive into it. Today I have already created the, the mold tree that we're going to be using, but if you want to know how I did it, you can click the link above and go back to my first tutorial video in which I built it from scratch. As always, we'll start by setting our correct color space with a CSD note to accurately interpret the camera data. This time we have Blackmagic camera footage, so our input color space will be Blackmagic Design Wide Gamut Generation 4.5 and our input gamma Blackmagic Design Pocket 6K Film Generation 4. Our output color space, on the other hand, will be DaVinci Wide Gamut and output gamma DaVinci Intermediate. We will turn off tone mapping in the input CSD to avoid initial compression of highlights and shadows. In the output CSD, our input color space will be DaVinci White Gamut and Input Gamma DaVinci Intermediate. Our output color space, as usual, is Rec. 709 and Output Gamma 2.4. This time we will use DaVinci's own tone mapping algorithm and set the max output to 10,000 nits. Now that we are in the correct color space, let's have a look at our image. At first glance, we can see that it is too bright, even for a log image, so let's start with lowering the exposure this time, so we have a better initial judgment. This is looking better, so now we can continue with our look. As you may remember from the first tutorial, look development involves a deep understanding of color science, and that's beyond the scope of this video, so instead, we'll use the same cruises slot by Colin Kelly to create a more contrasty look. Next we will add the Kodak 2383 film look using Dehancer Pro. For this we'll first disable the default tools, select the high quality option, set the correct color space and finally bring in the Kodak 2383 LUT. Finally, we will lower the output level until it matches my desired look. In the next parallel note, we will repeat the same steps, but this time add the halation and bloom effects to get our desired look. Now, let's give our image some more contrast. For this, we will use the primary wheels. Gain will be our contrast knob, and offset will be our pivot. At this point I want to pause for a second and double check the exposure to make sure our focal point, the talent, is properly exposed. Yes, as you can see her face sits around 640 in the waveform, which is perfect for an outdoor setting. Now let's check her skin tone to make sure it falls on the skin tone line in our vector scope. We may want to tweak it a little bit, and for that we'll use our DCTL by Mononotes. Looking better. Now we'll give our image some saturation. For this node only, I will use the HSV color space as it changes saturation in a photometrically more accurate way. So we will first switch to HSV color space and turn off the hue and value channels. Then we will use the primary gain wheel to increase the saturation. In the log node, we will address the shadows as they appear a little bluish. We may want to lower the red and green channels slightly as well. Let's toggle it on and off to see the difference. Looking better. In the color warper node, I want to make her brown jacket to pop a little bit more. First, let's see where her skin and the jacket sit in the warper. 
and then lock the skin tones to protect them. Now we can get her jacket pop a little bit. Now let's deal with the highlights on the top left corner of the image. To bring them down we will use the highlights wheel in the HDR panel. Let's toggle it on and off to see the difference. Looking better. Now let's apply a power window to bring her up a little bit more. And in the next outside serial node we will bring down the background so she pops more. Let's toggle it on and off to see the difference. Looking better. Lastly, I want to add some contrast pop. This is kind of my secret sauce. Let's see the difference. Looking good. And there you have it. A warm, saturated film look. I hope you enjoyed this workflow tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos on cinematic color grading. Also, if you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover, leave a comment below. I'll see you in the next video.